Sometimes Forex trading is a wild and woolly place to be. That's why Hughes here. To pose your questions to Walter, the naked Forex guy. Hughes got questions and Walter's got the answers. Here at the Truth About FX Podcast. Hey, Walter, what happens if the market has already moved the average range of the day and you still get a signal? Do you ignore it? Yeah, this is an interesting point. It, basically, it depends on what the chart looks like. So I'm, I'm a technical trader. I don't really pay attention to news. In fact, like as we're recording this, Hugh, there's some massive moves on the pound. So I've got a pound yen trade and a pound kiwi trade, and I'm thinking about a pound Aussie trade. And so my pound kiwi and pound yen are just, they're like, Oh, and a pound CAD. I have a pound CAD trade too. So all my pound trades are like going gangbusters, right? And I know there's some news that happened last night or whatever that probably fueled it and everyone's talking about it, but I actually don't even know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> like I don't even care. Like I haven't, I haven't, you know, I haven't logged into FX Street to see what's going on or whatever. Like I have no idea. Like someone could have been assassinated or <laughs> kicked out of office or, you know what yeah. I mean? Somebody, took took over the Bank of England or I don't know. I have no idea. But all, all I'm saying is that I base it on the charts. So to answer your question, if the market's in a, like a runaway trend and it's broken through, let's say the market's fallen through a really critical support level, okay? For one of my systems, it's called the Acapulco system, which is basically a break. It's a breakout trade and it, and it breaks out through a support and resistance level. And so if I see something like that and it's already moved the range of the day, I might still place my order in to take the trade. Now, it may not necessarily get triggered today. It may get triggered tomorrow, right? But it's because the candles are starting to accelerate and look really big that I sort of throw the ATR out the window. Because remember that ATR... Um, at least the way that I look at it, which is, is, isn't very often, but if, if I do look at the ATR, it's a 10 day ATR. So those small candles that we're printing last week go into the calculation of that ATR and they, and it's not really that important that the last two candles, for example, were really big. You know what I mean? It didn't really move the ATR that much. So, so to answer the question, if it's a really strong trending market, I kind of disregard this idea of the of you know the the market's already moved the range of the day. If however, the market is kind of quiet and then it breaks out and like just takes off, I probably won't get in on that on that really aggressive candle. So it's there's a subtle difference. If the market's been is in a strong trend is, and it's it's really accelerating, okay? There's a lot of momentum behind it, then I'm happy to take the trade. But if it's been really really quiet and it just did a breakout like just like the first candle is today, then what I'll do is I'll actually wait for the pullback and get in on the pullback or I'll wait for the market to go even further. So it'll pull back and then bounce and then keep going beyond that big candle if that makes any sense. So there's there's a couple of ways to do it, but I really base it on what the charts look like. And so and and for anyone out there if you're interested in the way that I look at this, I can post a video in the show notes here of the difference between, you know, what I would call like a range bound market versus a trending market because there's actually candle characteristics that you can see in a trending market. If you see those characteristics, then you should expect those big trendy candles to to print and you can actually trade off of those. So I'll I'll post that in, in the in you know in this episode so you guys can see that uh, and see if that resonates with you. But yeah that's so that's my approach. Um, do you typically pull back if the market's gone really far and and you're not, you know, and, and, and you're thinking, well, I don't know, it's already moved quite a bit, so I, I won't place this target this trade, or do you just put them all into your platform? I just kind of put them all in. I found that ATR, at least for me, only really works uh, if I'm setting a stop on some sort of like momentum-based system. But otherwise, yeah, I'm more with you that you know the pattern is more about what matters than the actual range of the day. Yeah, you bring up a really good point. The, AT, the using the ATR ATR in a calculation of the stop is a really cool way. If you, especially if you're using any sort of um, trailing exit. You know, for the traders out there, that's something that's like a really fruitful area that you guys can explore, I think. And it makes sense to a lot of traders. Like, you're basically saying, you know, if the market's been going wild, I need to give this trade a little bit more room. Whereas if the market's been really tight, but I can use a tighter stop. The problem with that, of course, is that, <laughs> as we all know, the market fluctuates between these really tight range bound 
markets to the very volatile ones, you know, and it kind of goes back and forth and, and vacillates. So, so that can, you can kind of get caught in that, you know, if you, if the market's been exceptionally tight, you could have this really tight stop loss on your trade. And then like you get a signal and you take it, but because it's been so tight, the signal is kind of this wild breakout and it actually, maybe it goes up and then it goes down and then it, you know, it stops you out, you know, it would, and it wouldn't have stopped you out if you had a wider stop. So it's kind of tricky, but it makes the math behind it makes sense to a lot of traders to use the ATR in their, um, you know, in their, in their, in their exit or in their stop calculation. So it makes, makes a lot of sense. And I can see why, you know, I can see why it's so popular with traders. It makes, makes sense to me. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, it just depends on what you've tested, right? Exactly, exactly. You gotta, you gotta have that, and I know you have that confidence because you've done your testing. So that's really the key. You're right about that. Okay, yeah. cool. Thanks, Walter.